this episode is not sponsored by Squatch Soap. This is just Squatch. We're talking <laughs> about Squatch today. <laughs> what do you know about Squatch, Andrew? Andrew? Who Andrew? are you? Austin? <laughs> I don't know. Are you doing a secret podcast with somebody else? Who's Andrew? <laughs> oh my god, it's, the, it's, it's my friend. I know too many Andrews, though. What do I know about Sasquatch? Do the um, Adirondacks... Wait, New York's the Adirondacks, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking Appalachian. That's, like, more south. But do the New York... Does New York and the Adirondacks have a Squatch sightings? So, we do. And actually, that thing I sent you in Facebook, that is uh, in uh, Whitehall, New York. And Whitehall, New York has the most Sasquatch sightings. I thought that was Washington. No, no, I was gonna say in the I was gonna say in the Northeast. Oh, I see. I Not in the off. world. No, nor, uh, Washington State has the most, which we'll get yeah. into later. But no, uh, yeah. So Whitehall apparently has the most Sasquatch sightings, and you went to the Great Escape with me before, right? Oh yeah, that's where I got sick from yeah. the loop de loop ride that went on for three minutes. That's just a loop de loop. Yeah, and now I can never ride roller coasters again. Yeah, me and you were looking at each other in the eyes and trying not to puke. It was very intimate. I, I think at one point, <laughs> at one point, I I actually screamed, "Please stop! <laughs> Please stop the ride!" Um, where they I was going it. with that was so Whitehall, New York, is maybe like twenty miles from Lake George, hmm. and uh, there's a ride there called the Sasquatch, and it was named that in honor of Whitehall, New York, which is really close by. So yes, we got squatches up here, supposedly. And yet you still don't believe, I see. I, well, as you can see by my name, I don't know if these titles actually appear on the video. So if you have no idea what we're talking about, me and Fernando are playing around with these little titles that appear. It it's like a screens. Zoom call and it like you can change your, your title. Yeah. And his is Austin in parentheses non-believer. Uh, and his, like his little uh, description is hates Fernando. Mine is Fernando in parentheses Sasquatch believer. My description is a resident Sasquatch enthusiast. I like yours better. Yours actually sounds a little better. But yeah, yours to... is just, I'm pretty sure yours is a hate crime. Okay, well, well <laughs> if we ever start a next to do a true crime episode, <laughs> we can do it on that. But uh, how about you? Okay, I mean, me and you have some of the similar, some similar experiences of talking about Sasquatch with a certain somebody, but how about you? What do you know? Um, I just know that there's a very controversial video out there that started this whole thing that we'll probably get into that has been widely disputed among many people claiming to be the Squatch and many people saying that they are a fraud uh, that we'll probably get into. Yep. So It's a very okay. controversial topic, whether you believe or not. I want to believe, though. I think everybody wants to believe. I don't think there's anybody who doesn't want to believe. I mean, you. everyone... No, you, don't, I want to believe. you are anti-fun as it gets. <laughs> I want to believe, but I don't believe. And you need to give me evidence. That should be your goal by the end of this podcast. To actually, whenever this podcast ends, probably next week. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, whenever this ends, your goal should be to convince me to believe in something. Other than aliens, because I gave you that one. Because I believe in aliens. <laughs> or you can just be, I don't know, like a fun person and believe. I don't instead believe of fun. a stick in the mud. No. I, if you're involved, I don't want there to be fun. I know. It's so annoying. <laughs> so, Anyways, okay. your anti-fun aside, let's get into the fun, shall we? Uh, we shall. Let's go. Where to begin? <clears throat> Probably at the introduction. Uh, that, was, that was rhetorical. <laughs> you're, this is why... Uh, you know what? Never mind. I'm muting you. <laughs> For centuries, various tribes throughout North America have reported seeing a tall hulking and reclusive beast patrolling the various mountains and forests outside of their settlements. To the Algonquin of the north central region of North America, the creature was known as the Witiko, or Windigo. To the Ojibwe people of the northern plains, it was the Rugaru. And to the Salish people of the Pacific Northwest, it was called Sas Sasquets, meaning wild man. While each of these names are still relevant and are used to describe various kinds of cryptids, it is the Salish people's designation that we still use to this day when referring to the legendary Bigfoot. So I actually, you know, um, talking about the video that you'll get to later, um, I didn't realize that Bigfoot actually kind of started in Native American folklore, to be honest. I, mean, I knew about the... Doesn't like... that kind of... Doesn't that kind of get you thinking, like, 
Listen, the Native Americans were around way before this guy that claims he was Bigfoot in a costume in the 1960s. Maybe there's something out there. Maybe there used to be something out there. I mean, one thing I a was... lot of shit went extinct. Mammoths went extinct, and they're they pre- they they're the predecessors to elephants, and they were like a million times the size. People I exaggerate. were around when they were around too. I'll give them that. The thing I will say is, first of all, it's interesting about how you know you mentioned like the the Wendigo and stuff. So obviously, we know the Wendigo as a completely different cryptid. We do not consider today at least a sasquatch to be the same thing as a wendigo but they're basically the species cryptids yeah right well i guess if you lump all cryptids into so that means bigfoot is related to the loch ness monster no they're just the same species Ah, oh, okay well anyways um if i am living anywhere in the country at this time um before uh certain people arrived and took it all away um i'm sorry i said before certain people arrived and took it all who, away who took it all away the Europeans, okay? <laughs> can you can you be more specific? Um, people who look like us, N- not not like me. You mean not I, like you? I descend from native from from indigenous people. I thought you said you were more me like... can prove that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, whatever. Basically, what Austin's trying to say is, people like Austin took the people like mine's land away and basically killed us all. Isn't your Continue. mother? <laughs> you keep my mother's name out of your mouth (laughs) okay anyways what i'm getting where i was going with this is these people are living in the woods and the woods are a scary place especially in a time when there's no electricity you don't you know at this point they don't have guns they don't have you know you're gonna hear things and see weird stuff in the woods and you're gonna develop stories and you're especially going to develop stories to keep your children out of the woods because you don't want them getting killed by a bear or a wolf. Or, or... an actual Bigfoot that existed and then went extinct in the 1900s or 1800s. You know, I don't know. Okay, well. Why would they lie? They don't need to lie. They could just say, oh, keep like, don't go in the woods because there's a bear. But instead, they're saying Bigfoot. But I, I wouldn't want to fight a bear. A kid knows a bear is dangerous and going to kill you. I would rather take you on You don't a have bear. to tell me there's a Bigfoot. <laughs> I mean... I go in the woods. I'm not scared of bear. I don't want to fight because one. Because you're, you're dumb. <laughs> I mean, that's part of being in the woods. It's a risk you take. Exactly. So you're telling me, like, if you if someone told you there's a Bigfoot, you're going to magically not want to go to the woods? No, you're still dumb. You'd probably still go. <laughs> we'll agree to disagree. You're wrong, but yes. <clears throat> Back to the story. When observing recent reports, it becomes even more obvious that the creature has favored certain regions over that of others. Although every state in the USA has had at least one Squatch sighting, apart from Hawaii, because, you know, it's too hot down there. Squatches can't swim. Specifically, this gigantic ape tends to favor states like that of Washington that has 721 sightings, California that has 461 sightings, and Florida that has 343. Of course, Florida's in there. I think Florida just wants attention. Probably. Comparatively... The state of New York has had 120 sightings, Vermont just a measly little 10, and Massachusetts coming in around 37 sightings. And if you'd like to check your state, we've included a link down below to the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization's website. I find it so hard to believe that Vermont only has 10 sightings. That stat blew me away. <laughs> well, Vermonters are like too busy, I don't know, fishing or something, doing something like camping and then like just... I don't know, being weird. Vermont but don't you think weird. that, that would, if, if it's a state that's known for camping and fishing and outdoor recreation, that those would be the people that would be like, I saw a squatch. <laughs> Meanwhile, in New York, granted, I get it, most of the settings are probably around, like, northern New York. But I bet you there's one Sasquatch setting in New York City. <laughs> They're like, I saw him in Central Park. There's a, there's, a, there's a giant lake that separates New York and Vermont. And as we've established, Squatch doesn't want to swim, deep. <laughs> that's true. You're right. You're right. I said it earlier. Maybe that's a... Furthermore, despite the term Sasquatch being used exclusively in North America, similar mythical creatures going by other monikers have been spotted throughout the world. This includes the Himalayan Yeti, as seen in Monsters, Monsters Inc., the Australian Yowie, and the Indonesian Ibu Gogo. Because these cryptids share so many of the same features, 
many cryptozoologists have been led to believe that they may all be of a similar species. What? I said you kind of said that earlier. You were kind of joking, but you were you were kind no, of serious. They're they're cryptids are cryptids are like a species. So you got Loch Ness monster, Chupacabra, Bigfoot, Bigfoot, Himalayan Yeti, and the Ibu Gogo and stuff. They're the same family. They are the same. Like what do you call it? Like how we de- like how Some we evolved species. from like uh, yes, like how we evolved from like apes and shit. See, also, tell Piper quiet on set. Piper I will not have her. Set. I will not have her interrupt again, or she's fired. <laughs> Wait, she's the only editor we can afford. <laughs> um. Okay. So. So you're telling me, and yes. I'm not disagreeing with you per se. I know you other are. people believe this. I disagree with the these people, not you necessarily, because you're a big. But if you are part of these people, I guess I'm disagreeing with you. Um. So you believe that all cryptids are part of the same species? Like cryptid is a species. Yes. Like, like, like how sapien. human, like, yeah, like how humans are a species, but then you have different ethnicities. So, a Sasquatch and a watch, Ness, watch your steps. And a Loch Ness monster. And humans are a species, but yes, we have like, different ethnicities. Cryptids are a species, but they have different, essentially, ethnicities. I think the better way to look at this is you have primates and then you have human beings under that <laughs> instead of talking about ethnicities and comparing Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster to ethnicities. So you're telling me Loch Ness is not Scottish? Are you being a bigot right now? <laughs> you know what? Watch your tug on. I'm not even going to argue this. <laughs> Nor should you. <laughs> All right. So I'm trying uh, to take away our land again in 2024. <laughs> I'm coming for your you. apartment. I know you are. All right. So what does Bigfoot look like, Fernando? Well, he uh, he's hairy and big. Reports of Bigfoot sightings typically depict the creature as being covered in black, brown, gray, or reddish-brown hair and having an average height of around 7 foot 10 inches. The body structure of his oversized You primate, know about 10 inches, don't you? <laughs> No. <laughs> the body structure of this oversized primate is said to be very muscular and can weigh as much as half a ton. That's twice as heavy as the now extinct G- Gigantopithecus Blackie, which yeah. stood 10, foot, 10 feet tall. <laughs> you know that Gigantopithecus Blackie, don't you? <laughs> if these descriptors... I heard Sam calls you that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is a family show. Anyway, I'm sorry, Austin's mom <laughs> or Austin's family. Anyone that listens to this, I, I, I just couldn't help myself. I'm sorry. Anyways, continue. If these descriptors are found to be accurate, then the Sasquatch would be considered the heaviest primate in all of recorded history. Additionally, according to researchers like that of Dr. Wolf Henner Fahrenbach, a former zoologist who claims to have gotten close enough to smell the beast, Bigfoot what do you smell was, like? I'm going to tell you. Bigfoot possesses an extremely pungent and terrible odor. Specifically, it is said that he smells like smegma. Can you, uh, for those of us that aren't familiar with what smegma oh. is, can you, uh, can you give us a definition, please? Uh, well, smegma. Origin of, uh, origin of the word, please? I don't know the origin of the word, but smegma. Can you sound it out for me, please? <laughs> Do you want the explanation or not? Just acting like one of those kids in the spelling bee. <laughs> S M E G M A smegma. Smegma. <laughs> Can you? Anyways, this stuff is typically found smegma. in body, like body rolls, like rolls, like, like what? Armpits, underneath, like rolls of fat. But where else? Where commonly? Foreskin, okay? It's found there too, all right? <laughs> all right, well, there you go. That's that's what smegma is, and Sasquatch apparently smells like it, so mm, there delicious. you go. In terms of behavior, squatches, or s- squatch eye. Oh, I think it's squatch eye, squatch scientifically eye? speaking. <laughs> no, I, don't know. I just like how it sounds better than squatches. Dude. In terms of behavior, squatch <laughs> eye typically keep them to themselves unless they feel threatened. 
If they do sense danger, they will typically flee the area as fast as possible. This has not always been the case, though, as there are stories in which they have howled, grunted, screamed, growled, and have even thrown things like that of small boulders at people. Sounds like your bedroom. (laughs) (laughs) It's just uh, weird gorilla noises. (laughs) Despite their seemingly animalistic instincts, it is said that these creatures actually possess quite a bit of higher intelligence. This supposedly includes being orderly, stacking rocks to mark areas, and according to BFRO, which is that thing you mentioned earlier, the Bigfoot Research Organization, uh, they even bury their dead, which could explain why it's so hard to find one. So, yeah, so they're believers i'm guessing which maybe you fall into this uh tend to believe they're quite intelligent they actually you know i've even heard things i i actually didn't find anything on this i didn't put it i didn't write it in here but i've heard reports that people some people believe that they have like like a social hierarchy and stuff like that but if that were true that would mean that they are quite intelligent and maybe they're closer to us than we would like to think let's see uh Let's talk more about it. Let's get more into the evidence of the Squatch in this what is it, uh, intelligent primate. Even though sightings of Bigfoot have frequently been reported among the Native American populace, no real evidence has ever been produced by those claiming to have seen the beast. Until Gerald Crew discovered something quite popular while working construction in 1958 outside of Bluff Creek, California. Miraculously and conveniently, it appeared as though he had found a gigantic footprint that appeared to belong to a Sasquatch. Immediately upon identifying the print, he then proceeded to cast it in cement. How convenient that he was a construction worker and had access to <laughs> You know, like maybe there. these people, like, like this guy, right? had caught wind of these native american stories and he's like you know what? let me make a quick uh a quick scam like never mind <clears throat> for many of the individuals who are a part of the rapidly developing new field of the study of cryptozoology this was an extremely exciting find the discovery also prompted multiple news outlets to cover the rapidly developing story most notably an editor named andrew Genzoli of the Humboldt Times coined the name Bigfoot. I hope you got like, what is it? What do they call that? Uh, you get money. Royalties. Royalties, yeah, royalties. When referring to the enormous footprint. From that point on, the name Bigfoot forever became synonymous with the word Sasquatch. Like any Bigfoot memorabilia that gets sold in any of these states by any licensed like merchandiser i hope he has like a royalty like he has like a check cut i'm gonna go on a limb and say no but he probably, <laughs> probably also didn't not. realize how big this was gonna become like mm-hmm. you know this pun intended you piece of shit <laughs> you know there was like murmurs going around at this time that oh you know there might be something in the woods but it's by no you know for example this was in california and the washington area and all that stuff anyways if you went into <laughs> kansas and was like hey i saw sasquatch they probably have no idea what the hell you're talking about at this time unfortunately for believers the authenticity of this discovery would be eviscerated in 2003 by the sons of a man named ray l wallace according to them their father had created a foot out of wood as a prank and had proceeded to embed them in the ground thus creating a footprint Apparently, their father had originally carried out the prank without much thought and had never expected it to take on such a life of its own. Also convenient. To give the... <laughs> <laughs> to give the believers a little bit of hope, in 2006, a primate morphology expert named Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum claimed to have viewed another supposed cast of the elusive primate, one that spanned 14 inches, after conducting his own examination, he claimed that the print would have been exceedingly difficult to fabricate, as it contained both skin whorls and suggested a running motion. Interesting, Austin. What do you think about that? What do I think about that? What do you think about that? Um, What I think about that is, it was just, okay. So, 
the first one we're looking at is what? Uh, 1958. So a man creates a thing out of wood and supposedly it's, it, it's deemed fake. Supposedly the signs come out and say, Hey, by the way, that print that Gerald crew found, that was my, yeah, father's. he makes it in 1958 and they report on it 45 years later. Well, his father took it, to, their father took it to the grave. You know, they didn't want to ruin it for him. They're good sons until he's dead. Or maybe <laughs> they just wanted a, like 15 minutes of fame. Maybe. Fast forward, though, to 2006, technology has come a long way, and it's not as hard to fabricate things as we now know. It's very easy to fabricate stuff. And, yeah, I could totally see someone making another print, especially a man named, the man named Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum. He comes, I think he comes up a couple times in here. It's either him or another doctor, but they're both very, like, pro, like, Sasquatch is real, and they, like, die hard believe in it. And uh, actually, yes, it is this guy. We'll talk about him a little later. Um, I could totally see him fabricating it and being like, I, I got it here. I see it. It's what I want it to be. And I believe that he genuinely believes in Bigfoot. But I also could totally see this man fabricating certain things to make other people believe. I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm or maybe saying... his sons did the exact same thing and lied. Mm, just maybe. for attention. Maybe. Possibly. <laughs> Like Probably how can not. you be how can you be skeptical of one and not the other? That's what just bias. It's not bias. It is bias. You're gonna believe these sons, like, oh yeah, my dad did that over like a guy saying, oh, the like the science detects like skin whirls in like a running motion. Like you're I'm, clearly being biased. Anyways, I'm get just, into it. I'm just saying Continue the story, Austin. I you're am just a, saying you're clearly that a hypocrite. if there is a Bigfoot, you're a hypocrite. Like, out of all this. They haven't found one yet. They haven't shot one yet. Or have they? They haven't found an alien yet. Or, or shot an they? alien yet. They're just not telling us they got an alien. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're a hypocrite. Go. <clears throat> one of the biggest issues skeptics tend to have with the idea of Bigfoot is the lack of an actual specimen. It's true. After all, if there were so many sightings, how had nobody... <laughs> on my monitors, what I'm going to do. <laughs> After all, if there were so many sightings, how had nobody up to this point managed to bag one? Well, in 2008, that would all change when a name, name, man named Rick Dyer found something while hiking in the woods. Dyer, who owned and operated Georgia Bigfoot Tours, guest starred on a radio talk show called Squatch Detective. During the interview... The Sasquatch hunter proceeded to drop an absolute bombshell. Apparently, he had in his possession an actual Bigfoot carcass in which he had found in the North Georgian mountains. He also Georgian stated, as in state or the country? Uh, state. Okay. So this guy is in good old Georgia. Um, I didn't know Georgia had mountains. They have some, I think. Well, the North Georgia mountains. I was about to say North Georgia, but yes, North Georgia does have some mountains. I think they bleed into... Um, I don't know. I don't actually know Georgia that well. I've only taken the interstate through it. <laughs> he also stated that he had spotted about three other similar creatures after making the discovery. According to Dyer, it took his crew a day and a half with six men to carry out the Bigfoot, all while being followed by other Bigfoot creatures. Okay, so this man took a body out of the North Georgian mountains of Bigfoot. And the whole time he and his six crew mates or whatever you want to call them are doing this for a day and a half. Uh, they're being followed and stopped. Yes. Yes. You're skeptical, but yet you'll believe some guy like on Reddit that goes, Oh, uh, I, I, straight I, facts. I can, I can attest that that was just a Bigfoot suit. I made. <laughs> <laughs> Do you this have is... pictures? No. <laughs> <laughs> this conversation's heating up. It's because you're stupid. <laughs> oh, okay. He ain't real, damn it. As you can probably imagine, the news spread fast among the Squatch hunting community and prompted all kinds of questions and offers to showcase the trophy. I'm just picturing Ken online on <laughs> AOL. Him to, but I'm not AOL, this. dude. Like... <laughs> AOL chat group. Squatch hunters. Squash oh. Hunters International, dude. <laughs> oh, we should do an interview with this man. Oh, we should have. I hope he's well. <clears throat> Me too. I hope so too. Uh, so anyways, the, the media wants him to showcase the trophy. Not wanting to disappoint anybody, 
Dyer accepted an invitation to a press only conference. When he arrived, he brought the body with him. However, it was encased in a block of ice for the purpose of preservation. So one thing I did not add, it is said that people at this showcase, someone paid, someone bought this from him for like hundreds of thousands of dollars. There, that is a rumor. Um, a rumor. See, you can't even fact check your rumors. I mean, I only say this because when BuzzFeed did this, they said in theirs that somebody bought this. I didn't see a lot of evidence of that, but I don't want to call them wrong. So I'm just going to say I didn't find the article. That's all I'm going to say. Eventually, I'll though... I'll call them wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> Where are your sources? <laughs> they probably have a source. They have no source. Eventually, though, the ice melted at the conference and revealed that the body of Bigfoot was nothing more than that of a rubber gorilla suit. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's kind of funny. I just picture everyone's like in shock and awe. And all of a sudden, it's as it's like thawing. They're like, it looks kind of like a gorilla. <laughs> and then it fully thaws. And they're like, oh, my God, it's a rubber suit. <laughs> I guess it's better than like a gimp suit. So that's better. <laughs> Yo, chill, dude. Chill. Family stream, dude. You're going to have to... Exp- kids uh, are not going to... Parents are going to have to explain their kids what a gimp is now. Are you happy with yourself, dude? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Continue. Oh. You're off. I'm going to have to edit this, you piece of shit. Upon being exposed, Dyer claimed that an unnamed government agency had confiscated the real Bigfoot body. Believing that he needed to produce something... He then proceeded to fabricate the hoax. That makes sense totally. So he thinks a government agency stole Bigfoot and replaced it. And so he's like, oh, God, or didn't, sorry, they stole it. And he's like, I got to think of something. And then he just grabs a, he goes to Spirit Halloween and grabs a gorilla suit and just throws it in a bucket of water and freezes it. I can't comment on it because uh, I don't oh. want to comment on it. Don't thought. Let's get into probably the most iconic piece of evidence. That is probably perhaps the Patterson video. So far, almost every piece of evidence that we have presented has been explained away by lack of supporting evidence. But as it turns out, one of the oldest pieces that we have available is actually one of the few that can't be easily explained away and is probably found on YouTube. And that is, of course, referring to the Patterson video shot in 1967 on a personal camcorder. This video was recorded by amateur Bigfoot hunter Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin. In the film, you can see what appears to be a giant hairy creature sauntering through a clearing and turning to face the camera. (laughs) For context, the location of the alleged sighting was Six Rivers National Forest in California. While many people have simply chalked this up to being a man in a gorilla suit, as people have been fooled before... (laughs) Others believe that this specimen was way too detailed to be a cheap suit, cheap suit, much less one that was made in the 1960s. Even the aforementioned Dr. Meldrum is convinced that this is more than just a simple hoax, as he had this to say on the matter. Quote, it's also easy to say, obviously, that's a man in a fur suit until you see it up against a man in a fur suit. In the 1970 sequel of The Planet of the Apes, they look like big, hairy Pillsbury Doughboys. In the Patterson video shot before the 70s, they can see the trapezius, they can see the deltoids, erector spine, down the back, shoulder blades moving under the skin, the quads contract when they're supposed to contract. So, yeah, he, uh... And I know for a fact people have come out years later like in the 90s in the 2000s being like oh yeah that was a i did commission a fursuit or whatever ha 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 ha. like yeah of course you did right 40 years later you want the fame yeah of course there's a couple i think that what you're talking about too to be fair they talked about them on like those really like shitty documentaries like they interviewed someone in these documentaries where they're like the biggest like money grab quote unquote documentary about these things you know they've done them about uh you know deal off pass with the yeti you know you know what i'm talking about they're on like discovery and stuff like that they're complete throwaways they're not yeah they're the moon hoax people yeah exactly really seriously so basically uh i will give this one to you the people who come out and say that with this video you know usually they're lying and it comes out pretty quickly that they were lying (laughs) 
Yeah, they just want money, brother. Well, yeah, of course. It's the root of all evil. There's lots of money in this. So, yeah, anyways, um, that thing you just read, you know, from Dr. Meldrum, it's kind of funny when they were actually explaining the interview because he's progressively getting more and more excited as he's continuing to talk. He's very excited. He's very excited about this, and he fully believes in it. So, uh, so yeah, I, that's something, I guess. Hmm. So, you believe in the Patterson video, I'm guessing. I do, actually. Okay. I mean, I will admit, it is, out of every piece, it is the most convincing. And aside from getting excited like this man did, he's not wrong. I mean, they've done, like, deep analysis of the video, and it at least... No, I've seen the deep analysis. It's pretty convincing, and I don't believe... I believe that more than I believe a guy that comes out 60 years later, like, oh, oh, oh it was really a suit. <laughs> like, yeah, like, no, okay. I, I hear you. It's like, really? 60 years you're going to come out and say that? Not at the height of its popularity? The only, like, criticism I, I heard about this from the people who actually did it, so, like, between Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin, Bob Gimlin said he actually regrets filming it because Roger Patterson got all the praise. Yeah. But that's not him talking about it being fake or not. It's just him talking about he regrets doing, you know, doing the work and not getting the praise. Like so, me on this channel. You're my Bob. You're the Bob Gilman to my I'm, Roger I'm Patterson. I'm Bob Gilman, dude. <laughs> Anyways, as you were. All right. So there is one thing that would explain all the mysteriousness around Bigfoot. And that is the question of, is Bigfoot an interdimensional creature? Despite the existence of the Patterson video and some footprints, most people are not convinced that there is enough proof that the legendary Bigfoot is real. Many individuals typically cite the fact that almost everybody has access to a cell phone with an HD capable camera. Yet but no one goes into the woods anymore because there's no cell service or internet. <laughs> Your we're so addicted can... we're so addicted to our phones we're like why go to the woods screw that i go in the woods yeah but you don't film i've never seen a video of you in the woods i've never seen sasquatch in the woods if i saw sasquatch you can damn well bet you pull my phone out and videotape yeah, me. i doubt i doubt you would anyways yet nobody seems to be able to get a good shot of the beast in its natural habitat i just explained why furthermore <laughs> you would also think that by now we would have found a deceased carcass in the woods. Yeah, we have. We, we established that they bury their dead. We did not establish anything. It's just. We did, like in the first <laughs> section. It's just some people think that might be the case. We don't know Bigfoot. Okay, if Bigfoot is real, we don't know he's intelligent. We don't know he's intelligent to bury his dead. Although, I saw That's an interesting very video. That's of you. I saw an interesting video a couple days ago. It turns out elephants actually bury their babies. Like when and they're you're dead. telling me, yeah, I know they do. And you're telling me that an intel interdimensional figure like Bigfoot can't do that. Well, an elephant never forgets. I've never heard anything like that about Sasquatch. Because you don't believe in him. Because he's not real. God. <laughs> Let's continue. So Get if the Sasquatch here. is real, why is this the case, Fernando? Why is it the case? I already <laughs> explained it all, but I, I refuse to do it again. <laughs> Well, according to a theory proposed by paranormal investigator Stan Gordon, what a name. Good Stan, dude. <laughs> That's an easy one. Bigfoot is an interdimensional creature capable of transcending the very fabric of our reality. In the documentary Paranormal Declassified, tracking Bigfoot, Gordon stated the following. In some cases, we will see a series of large footprints, but as we follow the tracks, they suddenly stop, vanish, and disappear. Those are the same exact things. Uh, we've heard these stories of people who have seen these creatures, and in some cases, they just vanish. They would say, this thing appears suddenly in front of us, walks in front of our vehicle. We see it from head to toe, and suddenly, it's gone. It's a very, very weird phenomenon. We're dealing with something that's much stranger than a flesh and blood unknown type animal. The data I am seeing now indicates we're dealing with something with a physical and non-physical component to it. For lack of a better term, I call it interdimensional. So Bigfoot's an alien. That I can get on board with. There you go. Bigfoot's an alien. <laughs> Even though you've never seen evidence of an alien. Oh, I've seen it with my own two eyes. You're such no, actually, I, I actually, I actually I have seen evidence. I know and you that's say, the story. That's the yeah. story I tell you about me and my sister and like this thing shooting out in the night sky. 
So in Vermont, like I already explained on a different different episode, I think it was the the school one, the aerial school one. Is it that one or the Phoenix Lights? It was the Phoenix Lights. But uh, yeah, in Vermont, you can see like almost every night the sky is clear and you can see pretty much pretty certain lights and stuff that aren't stars. Anyways, if you want, you can go watch it over there. You can also see Bigfoot flying too. <clears throat> Shut up. Soaring to the earth. Let's Eryx wrap this baby up so I can get away from you. <laughs> to this day, while the existence of Bigfoot is still highly contested by the vast majority of people, there are also many people who are absolutely convinced that he is a living and breathing entity. This becomes quite obvious if you regularly check in with the BFRO website as reports are continuously coming in on a monthly basis. Unfortunately, <laughs> until somebody actually catches a Bigfoot alive, the mainstream media will more than likely always consider the belief in Bigfoot as a fringe topic or pseudoscience, a fantasy, if you will. So what do you believe? Are you a believer like me or a skeptic and a loser like Austin? Is Bigfoot real or just a fun story? Do you not like having fun like Austin? And if he's real, why do you think we haven't found him yet? As far as I'm concerned, while I may not be fully convinced I am that there are giant apes living amongst us in our forest, I will say this on the subject of Bigfoot. I want to believe. Yeah, that last part was made for me. I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, so that's, that's why you're so... wondering why he said that. That's why. That's why it's so stupid, dude. Anyways, so you don't Austin, believe in put Bigfoot, put a, right? I, I do believe in Bigfoot. You well, don't because you hate fun and you probably hate Christmas and America. <laughs> oh God. You know, like you said at the end, that was supposed to be me that said it. I do want to believe. I want to believe there's a Bigfoot. I want to believe there's a Sasquatch. I want to believe that there can be world peace, but you know what? <laughs> Some stuff unfortunately probably can't happen. And Bigfoot, I don't think is one of them. I'd love to be wrong though. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> I would. No, you're you're so full of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Anyways, what do you have? What do you have for our? You have anything for our guests as we part? Oh boy, do I! Uh, it's the usual stuff, as always. <laughs> Although we have something different coming towards the end of the next episode, so I'm excited to do that. So, if you want to figure out what that is, you can uh, you can tune in the next episode. Um, or I'll so, leave. Yeah. So, you know. No, I won't. I'm going to check us out on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple, whatever. Go find us over there. It's the You Go First podcast. You can see us here on YouTube. Same thing. Only we're called uh, at You Go First Pod on YouTube. And if you want to see some video games that are spooky in nature, head on over to YouTube and search up at You Go First Gaming, where you will see us posting regularly over there. So that is it for plugs. And yeah, if, oh, sorry. If you do have something you would like to suggest, you can email us at uh, you go first podcast nope. at gmail.com. You go no. first gaming at gmail.com? No. You go first at gmail.com. No. You go first TV at gmail.com. There you go. You go first TV we have too many at gmail.com. We have too many things. <laughs> or you can mail Fernando on his personal email at. <laughs> At Austin die. <laughs> <laughs> so no, that's all I got for plugs. So you know, toss us a like and a review. Share it with your friends. Share it with your enemies. Yeah, if you really, if you don't like us, you could do that. Share it with your enemies. Like, this is the greatest podcast ever, and then they're forced to listen to us for you know exactly. the first probably till the end of the theme song. I'm like this is stupid, and then they leave. Yeah, but they leave. so uh, this is the plugs. And Fernando, do you have any final thoughts? uh no i think you pretty much covered it all thanks thanks for doing that yeah no problem i have a final thought oh, of course you do in the event that sasquatch was real which he's not do you think he would hate you yes <laughs> i was actually gonna ask you think he'd like you <laughs> i think he would like me i think he would hate you See, I think he would, he'd consider you an overly presumptuous, like, fanboy, and he wouldn't like no, you. No, you're like, overly presumptuous because you think he's stupid as fuck and can't bury his own dick. He would be like, this guy's playing hard to get, and I like it. And he'd no, like me. No, he would hate you. Okay, track Especially record. after you taking all of our land. Track record. Everybody loves me. 
and they're fools. <laughs> well, also because you lie. I don't lie. Don't make me tell them the TSA Montreal story. Where you blamed me for your mistake and then everyone believed you over me. Well, you got us lost. You're such a piece of shit. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, typical guys. Gemini <laughs> behavior, dude. <laughs> on that note, guys. Um, Anyways, we... I didn't lie. Austin got us lost in Montreal and then went to work the next day and told everyone it was me, and they all believed him. Anyways, that's the end of the story. Bye. Stay spooky, everybody. Stay spookiest. Bye. <laughs>